my little Margie. I've been both mother and father to her since she was born. She's grown up now, and you think my job's all done, eh? <laughs> well, that's what you think. When she was little, I could spank her and make her mind me. I had control over her. I made her eat her spinach, no candy before meals. And when she disobeyed, I took her roller skates away for a week. But what can you do when a girl reaches this age? She's completely out of hand. I've got a problem, believe me. I've got a problem. That's my father. I've raised him from childhood. That is, my childhood. He's nearly 50 now, and you'd think he'd settle down, wouldn't you? Well, that's what you think. Today, he looks better in shorts on a tennis court than fellas 25. Girls wink at him, and what's worse, he winks back at them. I want a nice, old, comfortable father. I try to look after him, but he just won't settle down. I've got a problem, believe me, I've got a problem. Mr. Honeywell, what is all this? This, my dear Mr. Honeywell, is what will make you say, good thinking, Albright, good thinking. Bird calls? Albright, have you gone crazy? Now, here it is, point number one. We're trying to make a deal with Mr. and Mrs. Lamont P. Hartford. Check? Check. We've never met them. Check? Check. But we've done a lot of research on them, right? Right. And they're both very eccentric. Check? Check. And loaded with lucre. Check? Check. And now Mrs. Hart, but she's a bird fancier, crazy about birds, right? Check. I mean right. So I've been boning up on birds. Now, that's the mating call of the Australian web-footed Wangdu. <laughs> oh, Wangdu, all right. And now Mr. Hartford, he's a physical culture bug, exercising, health foods, and... <laughs> Yogurt. <laughs> Wheat germ. Blackstrap molasses. In other words, until the deal is closed, you're an authority on birds and mussels. Check? Check. Good thinking, all right. Good thinking. Well, actually, this part of it may do me some good. Exercising won't hurt anybody. Oh, how about your new insurance policy? Doctor's pass you yet? No, he wants me to cut down on my food, walk home from the office, no more cocktails, lose a little around here. Sometimes I wonder if it's worth it. Insurance is always worth it. A good way of saving money, and that's sound economy. Economy is efficiency. Efficiency is economy. That's what I always say, don't you? Well, I don't say it all the time. For instance, right in this office, take our wastebaskets. Do you know what I found in one of them today? Uh, a web-footed wangdu? I'm serious, all right. I found this. A perfectly good paper clip. Thrown away. Why, it makes me furious. Unforgivable. Unforgivable. Yes. Put him on. Chicago, it's Whitlock. Hello. Hello, Ed? Yes. Holy smoke, that was a close one for us. Yes, yes, he's right here. Okay, I'll tell him. Thanks for calling. Goodbye. The amalgamated merchandising deal. I got us out just in time. They're folding. Good thinking, Albright. Good thinking. You saved us six hundred thousand dollars. Dad. Hi, Margie. You're home early. It's only three thirty. Don't you feel well? I'm a little beat. The walk home tired me out. You walked home. You always take a cab. No more. From now on, cabs are out. I'll make you a cocktail. That'll perk you up. No, thanks, baby. No more cocktails for me. I'm cutting them entirely out. I'll start dinner. None for me, thanks. I'm going to skip a meal every once in a while. Good for me, you know. Margie, I came as soon as I heard the terrible news. I had to be near you in your hour of disaster. What disaster? Well, it's here in the paper. Hasn't he told you? Hasn't he told me what? Your father. Amalgamated merchandising. They've gone bankrupt. Why, he had a lot of money in it. He's probably wiped out. 
dead, wiped out. Is he home? Yes, but he didn't say anything about being broke. Well, it's not the sort of thing a man would want his daughter to know. Now I'm beginning to understand a few things. Cabs cost money, so he walked home. He wouldn't have a cocktail. He doesn't want any dinner. Freddie, he must be really broke if he thinks we can't even afford food. Margie, I know your father doesn't exactly like me, but regardless of his feelings toward me, I want you to know that as long as I have a crust of bread, he's not going hungry. Are you here again? Chin up, old man. doesn't want to talk about it in front of you. Margie? Yes, Dad? The Journal of the Doberman Pinchers Breeders Association. Do you read this? No, you do. I do not. You don't? No, who subscribed to it? I don't know. Every year they send us a renewal form, I make out a check and you sign it. We do that with a lot of magazines. Margie, this sort of waste has got to stop. I understand, Dad. A home should be run like a business. Economy is efficiency and efficiency is economy. That's what I always say. You're absolutely right, Mr. Albright. Why, people don't realize that money can be here today and gone tomorrow. Why, Freddie, that's actually an intelligent statement. Thank you, sir. If anybody had told me that you said that, I wouldn't have believed them. You're welcome, sir. You know how much I love you. You can tell me the truth. Why'd you walk home? Why won't you eat any dinner? I want to get a little of this off around here. Oh. I'll get it. Oh, Margie, Freddie, I just had the most wonderful cry. I brought it over to play for you. Johnny Ray's latest platter, a barrel full of teardrops. <laughs> I know you're joking. You don't look like you're in the mood for jokes. What's the matter, honey? It's her father, Mrs. Odette. Land's sake, is he sick? It's worse than that, Mrs. Odette. Dad's been... Dad's been wiped out in the stock market. Please don't say anything. He doesn't want anyone to know. Oh, honey, that's too bad. But maybe I can cheer you up. In 1929, my father-in-law lost everything in the crash. I'll never forget it. I was in the corner drugstore weighing myself. I weighed 105 then. And my girlfriend, Ethel, she lives in Detroit now. She came running in with the news. My father-in-law had jumped out the window. Jumped out of a window? Oh, Freddie, we're ten floors up. Please, Mrs. Odette, you're not cheering her up. What? Let me finish. There's a happy ending. The thing I'll always remember about my father-in-law was his presence of mind. On the way up to the 39th floor, that's where he jumped from. But I always said he could have gotten the same results without going up so high. Anyway, on the way up, he stopped in the insurance office and tripled his life insurance. <laughs> in a gruesome sort of way. Oh, I never thought of it like that. Lots of them were jumping. It was a sort of a fad, like the Charleston. Now, you cheer up, honey. Oh, the Charleston. <laughs> Stop thinking what you're thinking. Your father wouldn't do anything like that. Oh, this darn awning is stuck again. I'm going out. I'll see you later. Where to, Dad? I have an appointment with my insurance broker. When I go, Margie, I'll leave you well taken care of, because obviously you're going to need it. Don't worry, Mr. Albright. I'll take care of your little girl, and someday we'll all be together again. <laughs> Margie, the awning really was stuck. Oh, that was just an excuse. That awning's always getting stuck. He knows it and he knows I know it. But, honey, a man doesn't do what you're thinking unless, well, unless he's really off his rocker. But losing all his money, that could knock him off his rocker. I tell you, Freddie, we've got to do something. He just isn't acting like himself. Hey, I know a guy who could tell us. Tell us what? If your father's really off his rocker. Professor Nelson, I had him in college. He's an expert on this psychology stuff. 
He used me in a mental experiment once, put me in a room with a trained orangutan. We played five games of checkers. I won three out of five. You think we can see him now, right away? Oh, I don't see why not. I'll give him a ring. What you've told me will be extremely helpful, of course, but naturally I must observe Mr. Albright himself before I can draw any definite conclusions. Oh, but, Professor, I can't ask him to come here. I wouldn't want you to. I must observe him without his knowing who I am. Will you be home tomorrow afternoon, Miss Albright? If you want me to. Suppose I meet you at your apartment at 4 o'clock before your father gets home. When he does, I'll be just plain Mr. Nelson. I'll think of some excuse to explain my being there. Oh, Professor, I don't know how to thank you. Try not to worry too much. It may not be as bad as you think. Oh, I hope not. May we look at your phone book, please? I certainly. I'll get it for you. Now what? We've got to look up a good, fast rental agency. What are we renting? The apartment. We can't afford to keep an expensive place like that any longer. I'm going to sublet it to the first person the agency sends around. But Margie, without even telling your father? He's got enough on his poor mind. He'll be proud of me for handling this all by myself. I'll get us a little place, maybe just four walls and a roof over our heads. We'll make out somehow. Somehow. <laughs> We'll hear from the rental agency. Well, give them time. They've only had since this morning. I'm just anxious to get it over with, I guess. Oh, I haven't checked in 15 minutes. Yes? Dad, how are you? Are you all right? Listen, Margie, for the 50th, 60th, or is it the 170th time today, I'm all right. Oh, that's good. But just a minute, Dad. Freddy. At a time like this, a man needs all the encouragement he can get. To know people are on his side, pulling for him. Say something to him. Hello, old-timer. This is Fred. I just want you to know that I have $82 saved up in my Christmas fund, and you can have it. You want it, Margie. Too proud, I guess. That's the way he is. He'll probably never admit he's penniless. Even when we're living in a one-room walk-up. Margie. What is it, Freddy? You know I don't make very much money. I know. That's why I felt I could never ask you to marry me, but things are different now. Why, Freddie, you're proposing. Yes. I think I can finally say that I can promise to support you in a manner to which you're going to have to become accustomed. Oh, that's sweet, Freddie, but I couldn't. Dad needs me now more than ever before. Well, he could come and live with us. And then after a while, he might even let me come and live with us. Right, Daddy, dear. I've got to get him straightened out first. Albright? Yes. We'd like to see the apartment. The rental agency sent us. Oh, yes. Come in. This is Mr. Wilson. Your name is... Wait a minute. I've seen you a million times on television. You're Luscious Lou, the famous wrestler. The very famous wrestler. I'm Mrs. Luscious Lou. How do you do? Glad to know you. <laughs> Glad to know you. This is the den. It's in an awful mess we're packing. Let me show you the living room. And said Lamont P. Hartford Biscuit Company hereby agrees that Honeywell and Todd, for value received, shall... All right. I've got it. I've got it. Yeah, get over to your apartment right away. My apartment? They're on their way up there right now. Who's on their way? Lamont P. Hartford and his wife. They phoned up from the depot. They're on their way up to your apartment right now. My apartment? What are they going up there for? They're going to stay there. I told them it was all right. Anything to put a deal over. That's what I always say. Well, you're awfully free with my apartment. That's what I always say. Now, hurry on over there and get this side. Okay, okay. <laughs> well, I put this thing on the circuit porch. Wait, I'll give you some help. There you are. Professor, come in. Your father home? Not yet, but the new tenants are here. Will that complicate things for you when Dad comes? I don't think so. Not if they'll cooperate. Professor Nelson, this is Mrs. Lou and her husband, Luscious Lou, the famous wrestler. The very famous wrestler. How do you do? I'm here to observe Miss Albright's father. Yes, I've told them about him. Poor man. I guess anybody go berserk after losing all that money. What does berserk mean, baby doll? Nuts, honey. 
naturally, he mustn't know why I'm here. Let's say that I'm a business associate of yours and just Mr. Nelson, not Professor. We understand. And this is most important, whatever Mr. Albright says or does, anything at all. We've got to humor him. Now, don't contradict him under any circumstances. What does contradict mean, baby doll? Not, honey. <laughs> Here's my father now. Oh, you're here already. <laughs> I'm Vern Albright. Dad, this is Mr. and Mrs. Oh, you don't have to tell me. I'd know him in a minute. I've been building up such a mental picture of you that I recognized you the minute I came in the room. Glad to meet you, Mr. Hartford. Dad! Uh, your daughter wanted to introduce me, Mr. Albright. I'm Mr. Nelson, an associate of his. Oh, very happy to meet you, too. Sit down, folks. And now, Mrs. Hartford, listen to this. Can you place it? Oh, gotcha, eh? <laughs> the white-headed razorback zingy. <laughs> Wife on the zingy. Uh, oh, Margie, run out to the kitchen and get me uh, five spoons. Five spoons? That's right. Most extraordinary case. Do everything he says. Everything? To the letter. You said run out to the kitchen? Yes. <laughs> I wouldn't be without this for a minute. Oh, good for you. And I've got something for you, too. You'll just love this. Isn't it wonderful? Oh, well, thanks, honey. Now listen to this. It's the next one. Wang Du. <laughs> Web footed. <laughs> oh, don't worry. It'll keep on playing. I've got it on automatic repeat. And now, Mr. Hartford, in your honor, a little treat for us. Yogurt. Wheat germ. Blackstrap molasses. Pass the spoons and keep one. <laughs> You're next. Help yourself. <laughs> to good health and birds of the world. To the good health and, health and the birds, birds of the world. world. How many times must I tell you? Shoulders back. Yes, Lamont. And breathe deeply. That's better. Yes, Lamont. Lamont, listen. Birds. Say, have some more blackstrap molasses, Mr. Hartford. I'll go see who it is. Oh, no, no, no. I wouldn't even think of it. I insist. I love to answer doorbell. <laughs> I'll turn the record over for you. The other side is even better. So whoever it is, send them away, please. I don't want anyone else to see Dad in this terrible condition. Oh, sure. I understand. Thanks. I'm here to see Mr. Albright. Mr. Albright doesn't want to see anybody. <laughs> what? He can't do this to me. Oh, he can, eh? I'm coming in. Get him home and he'll sleep it off, I'm sure. Well, that's the end of Honeywell and Todd as far as I'm concerned. Come on, Martha. Bye. Yes, sir, Mr. Harper, this is going to be a fine relationship. We have so much in common. Here, have some more wheat germ. Wheat germ? <laughs> Maybe now. <laughs> There was no mistake, honey. Well, I was thrown out. If I hadn't bumped into you downstairs, we'd be on our way to the airport right now. Please, Mr. Hartford, you must have been on the wrong floor. This is Albright's apartment. Oh, listen. More birds. Honey, you too. 
for shame. It doesn't belong in there. Come on, we'll get the police. Oh, there you are. Come on now, let's talk about this contract. Contract? Oh, contract. Yes. Here, sit down. Thank you. Now, I know that you'll want to sign this, because with the money that we're putting into the business, and your biscuit know-how, we'll boost your net a million a year. A million a year? Hmm. The illusions of grandeur, very sad. If you'll sign right here, I'm sure that you'll never regret it. Uh, sign right here, eh? Yes. Why, uh, what, uh, what name shall I use? What name shall you use? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, just for a kick, why don't you use your own name? Lamont P. Hartford. Lamont P. Hartford. <laughs> Honeywell, are you out of your mind? Please, Dad, you mustn't get excited. Mustn't get excited? This is Lamont P. Hart, but he's just about to sign his contract. You're all crazy. I'm Lamont P. Hart. <laughs> Lamont P. Hart. No, Dad, you're not crazy. No, but it wouldn't be hard to get that way. If that's Lamont P. Hart, but who are those people? Well, that's Luscious Lou and his wife, the famous wrestler. The very famous wrestler. Well, what are they doing here? They live here. They're the new tenants. We're moving. Moving? I like it here. But, Dad, we can't afford it. You're broke. I'm what? Broke, oh, bankrupt, amalgamated merchandising. You lost your shirt. Oh, Marge, that amalgamated deal, we got out of it three days ago. We didn't lose a cent. <laughs> he isn't crazy. He isn't even broke. It was all a mistake. May I say something? Oh, please do, Mr. Hartford. Thanks for the yogurt. I'm leaving. <laughs> now, Mr. Hartford, please. It's all a misunderstanding. I don't do business with people who have me thrown out. Come on, Martha. See what you've done now, Albright? See what you've done now, Margie? Please, Mr. Hartford, try to understand. I thought my father was broke, that his mind had snapped. So you see, it was all my fault that you were thrown out because I didn't want anybody to see Dad in his condition. And, oh, I know I've ruined everything, but I'd do it all over again for my father because I love him. And... My wonderful little boneheaded angel, you mean more to me than all the big money deals in the world. Quite an act. Come on, Martha. And I made you vice president. I'll be right with you, Lamont. I forgot something. Honey, I think you were just wonderful doing all those fine things for your father. And don't you cry anymore. Everything's going to be all right. All right? What's all right about losing a big deal like this? Papa makes the dough, but Mama signs the check. Just mail me the contract. <laughs> oh, I'm so happy. Wait, Freddy, here's how wonderfully everything... Freddy! Where's Freddy? Freddy! Freddy! Freddy, are you all right? Dad, help me! Come on, Freddy, you can get up. I can't, I'm stuck. It's all over, Freddy. Everything turned out fine. Happy ending. This is a happy ending?